you and may God keep you today. I pray that God's hand rest upon you like never before. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us today. This is Pastor Larry at New Life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. You know, I just want to say to all of you, I know that there are people that are listening to us today and, and there are people that are here today. And I just want to thank all of you for joining us today for a live broadcasting state, a time with the Lord and in the Word and in prayer. Amen. Today we consider it as the day of power because this is the time when we uh, minister to God and and this is the time when we uh, just just share the the power, the, let the power of God be manifested in our hearts and our life. Amen. So I want to thank you all, amen, for joining us. And, and I pray that your lives will be touched and changed by the Spirit of Almighty God. Let us pray. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Father. That your word will go forth today without any hindrances of any force of any kind. And that you will manifest your word in our lives, Father. That we will find ourselves worshiping and giving you glory, honor, and praise for all that you do. And all that you saying to us, God. We know that, God, without you we can't do nothing. So, God, we look to you with boldness and with confidence. Because we know that when you hear us, when, when we know in our hearts that you hear us. We know that we have the petition of our heart answered. So, Father, I thank you for answered prayer today. God, you're going to move on the hearts of men and women all across this listening audience and those that are here with us today and for those that are still coming in. God, I just thank you, Father, in advance that you, Lord God, will show yourself strong on our behalf that we as your people will see you high and lifted up in this earth and that your train shall fill the temple as you have said in your word, God, we thank you, we bless you, and we glorify you. Now, Father, I thank you for crowning my head with wisdom and understanding. I thank you, Father, for supernatural impartations to speak and impart to, and impart to your people that by the Spirit which you would have them to receive. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well. I want to thank you all for joining us today. You know, I was just talking to my uh, wife uh, uh, just a few minutes ago, and we were thinking about setting up a time. You know, it's good to, for us to come here to, you know, to join, you know, for us to come like this. But wouldn't it be better if you could communicate back to us, you know, like like having a prayer, a prayer line service where we can be able to communicate back to you? Amen. Well, that's what we're going to start soon. We're going to start a prayer line service. And you know what? I, I, I just, it just came on my heart, a good way to start that. You know, that, that on uh, YouTube, they got Hulk, Hulk out. Amen. That's, a, that's what you can communicate. You can let people come in and join you face to face. Amen. And just minister. But I believe that God is going to set, set us up where we be able to minister to you, and let you be, you be able to call in uh, while we're on the air. And uh, just share your prayer requests, and we're going to be able to minister to you right there on the spot. Oh, I believe that time is coming. Amen. And so until then, we're just going to keep uh, going the way we're going. But I know that God is, this, this, is a, this, this is a time that God is calling his people to pray. He's calling for the prayer warriors to come forth. Amen. And, and a couple of weeks ago, I was out of my yard working, and God spoke to my heart again. He said, it's time to call for the Elishas to come forth. Amen. Well, you can call it the end time Elishas. Amen. But God, the end time Elijahs, I mean, because he didn't say Elishas, he said Elijah. God said, it's time to call the Elijahs forth. Amen. And so we, are, we, we got a message on that on Sunday mornings now teaching along that line amen we pray that that we are uh say something that will encourage you to uh help you to see that god is on the move right now we are not in this thing alone because god is with us his word and his spirit they comfort us he has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemy folks we are not alone you are not alone. I don't care what's going on in your life right now, but I know one thing for sure. 
that you are not alone. You are not a castaway. You are not some happenstance. You are not something that just popped up. You was perfectly thawed out and set where you are for such a time as this. Amen. So don't think it's strange where you at and what you're going through. Just look to the hill for which cometh your help. For all of your help cometh from the Lord. We are not we are not alone, folks, and we are not defeated. We overcome us by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Amen. We are not going under, we're going over. Amen. We're going over. And so I want you to stay, you know, keep your heart in the right, keep your heart and mind in the right place. Amen. Because you know the Bible tells us in in uh, Galatians chapter chapter two and verse twenty, Paul said, "I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live; yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God." Amen. You see, we have to come to an end of ourselves, and we have to come alive in Him. You know, I was riding down the road well just yesterday, and I said. And I looked up and, you know, I, you know, in my heart, I just said, God, you really love me, don't you? And I just had an impression on my heart. I said, son, yes, I love you. I love you. He said, but I know you're not perfect, but I love you anyway. Amen. And I just thought, I just thought on, that, on that for a while. And then last night when I came home, I said, I said, honey, you know, when I was riding down the road today, I asked God, God, do you really love me? And I said, I know it's not a question I should be asking you, but I know because I already know that you do. And there was just a sweet peace that came upon me. How many of you really know that God really loves you? You see, sometimes we have, to just, we have to just reacquaint ourselves with the love of the Father. We have to reacquaint ourselves with the love of the Father. And so in those intimate moments, those quiet times in our life, that's the time we need to just express to our heart toward God. You know, I asked God that question yesterday, and all day long, I have had to press, you know, my hands get hot when God, when God is close to me. Amen. My hand has been hot all day long. Amen. Right in the palm of my hand, it's been hot all day long with the presence and the fire of God. And I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking, Lord, you want to work a miracle somewhere. What, what? Where do you want to work that miracle? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to speak? What do you want me, who do you want me to lay my hand upon? Amen. Because see, when that fire come upon me like this, I know that it's not something that I have done. I know it's something that God is wanting to do. Amen. And so if you might be listening to me today and you may have a great need in your life. And God, he's here today. And I believe that he's going to reach out to you and he's going to touch you right where you are. You don't have to run around trying to find someone to pray for you. Amen. You don't have to find some but some some uh, some people, a person, what what uh, everyone is pointing to, saying he's anointed. Let him pray for you, or she's anointed. Let her pray for you. No, God can touch you right where you are. All you have to do is have a little faith. You remember that song? Have a little faith in Jesus. Tell him all about your problems. Amen. God will hear your faithful call. Amen. God wants to touch your life. And he wants to do it today. Amen. <clears throat> so, Father, I come against every demonic force that is working against the hearts of your people right now. I come against every band of wickedness that is trying to wrap his, 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 his uh, demonic uh, strap around their, their head to try to block out what you are saying, Father. God, I release the anointing that lift burdens right now and destroy yokes. Father, I speak peace to that troubled heart. I speak peace into that circumstance, Father, right now. That situation, Father, that seems like it's out of control. Father, I speak peace to it right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I speak peace over that parent's heart that's, that's crying out on behalf of their child or their children. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would touch right now by the power of your spirit. And thank you, Father, right now that your hand is not short that it cannot be extended, nor your ear heavy that it cannot hear. And God, I release your anointing right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, I feel like singing you a song today. Can I sing you a song? I just feel like it. It's in my heart to do so. So I'm going to do that. Amen. I'm going to sing a song just for you today. And I pray that this song minister to your heart. 
it's about a man called Delway. Delway wrote this song, I don't know, years ago. And uh, the title of this song, The Old Man Is Dead. The Old Man Is Dead. And I pray that you enjoy it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now and then, an old friend of mine that I've not seen for some time will stop by and ask me where have I been? What's on my mind? Then he wonder why I'm not drinking and still painting this old town red. But I tell him that I'm serving Jesus now. And the old man is dead. And the man you see before you. They look alike the same. I may wear those same clothes, and I have that same old name, yeah. But you are looking on the outside. If you could see inside instead. You would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead Thank you, Jesus See, this is part that I like Cause it's just like a testimony of my life I used to live such a wicked life I had no hope inside and I was lost in the darkness yeah. I was searching for the light But then one night in a little church after hearing what the preacher said, I gave my heart to Jesus, and the old man is dead. And the man you see before you. Look like the same. I may wear those same clothes, and I have the same old name. Yeah. But you are looking on the outside. If you could see inside instead. You would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead Yes, you are looking on the outside If you could see inside each day You would see a brand new man Second Corinthians five seventeen said, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new." Amen and amen. Glory to God. Well, I just wanted to sing that song for you today. Now it's time for us to just get real. 
What I mean by get real, it's time to get into word. Amen. It's time to get into the word. You know, we've been teaching on this for some time now because God placed on my heart. It's time for to call the intercessor prayer warriors to come forth. And, you know, I wish that uh, that you all could just join me, you know, right now. Amen. You know, this week, the rest of this week, it's a short week right now. We, what, what we This is Thursday. We have Friday and Saturday. Amen. I wish you all could just join me three times a day for the next two days in prayer. The day is Wednesday. I know, yes. The day is Wednesday. So we got Thursday and Friday. Two more days in this week. And I want you all that will to join me three times a day in prayer. Uh, that's at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. Amen. Those three times a day for two days, I want y'all to pray with. I want us to come together and let us intercede. Let's just say 10 minutes. Amen. That's a that's a short period of time. 10 minutes and let's pray for the body of Christ. Let's pray for the body of Christ to be strong. And let's pray for the peace of God over Jerusalem. Amen. For the next 2 days, 3 times a day, that's 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. Sacrifice that time with me and pray. Amen. And don't forget we're still praying. We're still fasting and praying uh, three days out of each month. God told me my people are not sensitive to my spirit. But then he said, well, then he said, I want you to fast three. When I started fasting, he said, you're going to fast this year, but not as you have done in previous years. This year, you're going to fast the first time, which was the first of the year. You're going to fast seven days with just water only. And then every month after that, you're going to fast three days out of the month. Three days out of the month. And God said, my people have been desensitized to my presence, to my spirit. And so I will resensitize my people by them spending time with me three times out of the month. I will resensitize them to my presence and to my spirit. Amen. And so God is beginning to... I mean, my spirit has become very sensitive already because I've been doing, I've been, I've been doing this. And there's some people that are listening to me right now. I know that you've been sharing with me that you've been doing this. And I had some people uh, uh, ask me, why do we do this? You know, and so I explained to them why we do this. You know, there's a lot of you that are listening around, around the globe. Amen. You're getting a hold of this, this prayer on Wednesday nights. And you're starting to tune in. And I wish that you would tell all your friends and let them begin to tune in. Take this message and share it. Because, see, this is something that God is He's doing. And he's not, it's not just for a few of us. It's for all of us. God is calling the body into prayer. Amen. So for the next two days, I'm going to ask you to join me in a special prayer. Amen. We're going to pray for the body of Christ. Amen. And for... The peace of Jerusalem. For the next two days, three times a day, that's 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. And if you hear me right now, now today is the, the day is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Wednesday the 15th. Amen. And so if you're going to join me, you need to, uh, you need to just let me know because I'm, I'm depending on you. Just like you like, you like these messages, I like to know that you're with me. And that you're going to stand with the, the body of Christ. Because see the body of Christ right now. Is, is God is going to strengthen the body of Christ. And he's calling for the prayer warriors. Will you stand with us today? Will you stand with us for the next two days? Three times a day? Amen. On these Pacific hours. Nine in the morning. Twelve at noon. And three in the evening. Amen. That a time when we all will come together at a point of time and we will pray. Now, that's an appointment that we're making with God. Now, when you do this, let me tell you now, when you make up your mind that you're going to do this, you're not telling me, Pastor Larry, I, I, I'll do that with you. No, you're not telling me you're going to do it. 
you're saying, God, I'm going to meet you at that appointment because this is an appointment that we are setting with God. You know, when you get when you ready to go to the dentist's office, you just don't show up at the dentist's office. You make an appointment before you go to the dentist's office. Amen. You go to the you go to the uh, doctor unless it's an emergency. You have to set an appointment to see your doctor. Well, we make an appointment to go to God. That, in other words, what I'm saying is this: whatever there is in our lives at these appointed time for ten minutes on each of these hours, we are going to set aside ten minutes, nine in the morning, twelve at noon, and three in the evening for two days that we will keep an appointment with God. And during this time, folks, you're going to be praying for the, the body of Christ, and you're going to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen? Oh, glory to God. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing right now to rest upon each of those that will join me in this prayer on the 16th, and the 17th of this month. I thank you for it now, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. So you, you just uh, get ready because God is going to do something, and he's going to do something powerful in your life at this time. Hallelujah. I believe that you're going to begin to see signs, wonders, and miracles happening throughout the body of Christ, those of you that are joining me. For these times. That's 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. That's three times a day. What do you say? Well, Pastor, why you call those times to pray? Well, when God first started dealing with me about these type of prayers years ago, He was tra He trained me like He like Daniel was praying. He was Daniel would pray three times a day. Amen. And so God has placed it upon my heart to do that again this week, three times a day. Amen. Three times a day. And I want you to pray for the body of Christ. And I want you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray that God hand rest upon Jerusalem. Pray that God will direct the leaders of Jerusalem. That they that they will come to know the fullness of his voice once again. That they will that the whole Israel, Judah and Israel, will turn their heart to God as in the days of old. Amen. When they were surrounded by the enemies, oh God, the 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 the, the, the leaders of, of, of God's people, they called a, a fast. I mean they called a fast that, that the people, not only the people fast, the children passed fast, and they called and they made their animals to fast too. Everything fast. And when they fasted, God did something in miraculous in their lives. In other words, he turned their captivity around. He turned the enemy around and the enemy destroyed themselves because the people of God came together in one accord and they began to seek the face of God. Hallelujah. Oh, when we can come together and we begin to pray on one accord, we can break down demonic strongholds that have been established for decades. Hallelujah over our cities, over our country, and over our nations. Amen. See, this is not something that we're just thinking about. This is something that God is speaking to us. Amen. This is something God is speaking to us. See, God is calling for his prayer warriors, and he's giving you an assignment now. If you just take and hear what the Spirit of God is saying, this is an assignment for you as a prayer warrior. Amen. This is an assignment for you. Now, if you honor this assignment, God is going to begin to speak to your heart like you never experienced before, even more. Amen. And the things that's been troubling your life, that I mean, I, I know that if you if you if you listen to this program, you listen to this ministry, I know that you 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 you've been coming under some some attacks because I I know this this is a, this ministry is an end time ministry, and we've been coming under some attacks, and so I know that you will go through some things but listen folks you're not alone you're not alone glory to god i want to just share a scripture with you right now amen i want to just i want to share a scripture with you 
and uh, and I want to bring your heart to understand the power of intercession, of intercessory prayer. It's, 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 uh, it's something that is very needed right now. God would not be calling us to do this if it wasn't necessary. Amen. If it wasn't necessary. But I believe that prayer is always necessary. Amen. Prayer is always necessary. I want to look here. Amen. I want to look here at a, at, at a, at a scripture here. I want to first look at Daniel. The book of Daniel. I want to look at Daniel and I will look at chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. And I want to look at uh, here at glory to God. Are you with me now? Amen. I want to look here at Daniel chapter 2 and let's look at verse number. Glory to God. Uh, let's go. Let, oh, no, gee, by lot of us. This is all good. Look at verse number, uh, let's see, verse number 27. Verse number 27. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the, 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 music, the, 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 the musicians and the soothsayers, uh, show unto the king but there is a God knows what he said but there is a God hallelujah but there is a God in heaven oh hallelujah but there is a God knows what he said in heaven that reveal it secrets that reveal it secrets how do you think that God was revealing the secrets of, de of, of, of the king to, the, to Daniel's heart. Because Daniel, he sought the face of God daily. I mean, he spent time with God daily, three times a day. He interceded for the people. Amen. He interceded for the nations. He interceded for all that God loved. And God loved you. He loved the Christians. He loved Israel. And so God has placed it upon my heart for the next two days. This is an appointment that we are making with God. Amen. For the next two days that we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to seek the face of God. We're going to pray and seek the face of God for the Christians and for the peace of Jerusalem. Why? Because the persecution is 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 up as an uprising persecution of the Christian. There's an uprising persecution against Jerusalem. Amen. And so we're gonna pray. We're gonna make up the hedge, folks. We're gonna make up the hedge, and we're gonna stand in the gap for the Christians. And I'm not just talking about the Christians in the United States. I'm talking about the body of Christ around the world. Amen. The body of Christ around the world. Look at the nations of how the the. The, look at the, the beheading of the Christians that is taking place in these other countries. Amen. We as a people have a right to come to God and ask God to step in on their behalf. Amen. To bring them to their expected end. Not to, see, not everyone was, was created to be martyrs. Amen. There are people, they, so many people created to live out their life in the fullness. And they need our prayers. They need the saints' prayers right now. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Our country and their countries and their nations need the prayers of the saints. You see, the wicked spirit that was in the world in the early day had showed up again in the earth today. And he's seeking whom he may devour. See, when the evil spirit is going out, he goes around in dry places trying to find rest. When he can't find them, he try to he, he go back to the house that he will come that he come out of. He go back into the house he come out of, and when he see that he's been swept and garnished, he go back and find seven other ones as worse as himself, or worse than himself, and they go back and enter into that that man or that body, and they 
try to destroy that body. You see, and what I believe that is happening right now is just like a miracle has lived peacefully for all this time, but now someone has opened up the door for the for the wicked of this world to come into America and I believe that America is just like that person that had seven had they had, they had that devil cast out of it now that devil is coming back seven times stronger and so we as Christians we have to become strong we can't become uh, 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 lazy we can't become slothful right now it's time for us to wake up and it's time for us to wise up and it's time for us to stand up and be the men and the women of God that God created us to be from the foundation of the world you see we're not strong in our own self we're not strong in our own might we're not strong in our own power but it's in him that we live because it's in him that we move and it's in him that we have our being oh hallelujah so we're not looking to be strong in ourselves. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he said, Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Friend, I'm telling you that this is an hour that God is about to, God is about to reveal his supernatural power. Amen. And it's going to be through the inner, through intercessory prayer, through intercessory prayer, the prayer warriors coming together and interceding on the behalf of the, the Christians and for the, and for Jerusalem. Amen. It's time for the world to see the life and the nature of God rising up in the earth once again. And we are not going to see that happen as we're being quiet and, and afraid to, uh, of being, and, of uh, being, uh, 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 allowing fear to grip our hearts and not afraid to stand up and to be the man or the woman of God that God created us to be. We will never see the goodness of the Lord hide in our head in the ground like an ostrich. We have to get out of the box and we have to begin to exercise spiritual authority, kingdom authority, amen, in the earth, in the earth. God has given us that. He has granted us that privilege. Amen. He has given us kingdom authority. Amen. In the earth. Glory to God. Now I know you know what I'm talking about. I know I know that you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking to someone that is not aware of who you are. I know that you know that you are children of Almighty God. And that the kingdom of God is in you. You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. You are, I know that you know that. So you don't have to have me to tell you that. But what I am telling you, that it's time for us, even though we know that, it's time for us to take a stand. It's time for us to take a stand because we are the seed of Abraham. Abraham, he stood before God, even in the midst when it seemed like he shouldn't have been, God still listened to Abraham. When the angel was sent into Sodom to destroy Sodom, God still listened to Abraham. Even at that critical time in that region, God still listened to a man. And God will listen to you. God will listen to us today. Friend, let me tell you something. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. When we enter into his gate with thanksgiving and to his court with praise, guess what's going to happen? He's going to look and say, oh, there come my warriors. There come my soldiers. There come those faithful few that I can count on in these last days, in this end time war for souls. Because the devil, he's doing all he can right now to take souls into captivity. And it's only by the Spirit of God that they can be set free. We can't set them free because we dress good. We can't set them free because we look good. We can't set them free because we smell good. But we can set them free with the living word of God. Out of our belly, the word of God is flowing in rivers of life. Whew, glory to God. And bringing forth life-changing resource in the lives of those that hear it. God wants to use you in these last days. Amen. God wants to use you.
in these last days. Now, you see, because God has given you the authority. He has given you the power. Open your Bible with me again to the book of Luke chapter 9. In the book of Luke chapter 9. Now, I want you to look right here. Luke chapter 9. Let's read verse number 1. Verse number 1 says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority. He gave them power and authority. Now, notice what he gave it for. Over all devils. Over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. So, God has given us power. Now, if we not only... See, he not only gave us power, but he gave us power and authority. Now, guess what happens when you stand up and begin to exercise your kingdom rights, walking and exercising spiritual authority and walking in the power of the word of God. You see, all hell going to break loose. When the devil see you coming, they're going to get out of your way because they see that you're not a match. They are not a match for you. Because you're not walking in your strength. They see you clothed in the armor of God. Hallelujah. Clothed in the armor of God. Why? Because you're not coming against a man or a woman. You're coming against the kingdom of darkness. Therefore, you're walking in your kingdom authority. You're walking in your kingdom authority and power. Because you're not coming against a man or woman. You're coming against the kingdom of of darkness and the kingdom of darkness will not stand against the one that God has set forth in power glory to God hallelujah now in Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 in verse number uh, 19 it says Luke chapter 10 and verse number 19 says, Behold, I give you, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You don't have to be afraid when you begin to engage in spiritual warfare. Amen. You don't have to be afraid when you begin to stand up and you know stand in the gap for someone that is hurting or stand in the gap for a nation. That the enemy is trying to annihilate or stand in the gap for a, a people that the that the the enemy is is using other people to bring fear or torment into their lives. Terrorism is an enemy of fear that's trying to uh, terrorize the heart of men and women of God to cause them to turn away from their stand. For righteousness. Amen. But don't you dare let the enemy fool you. Because he don't have no power over you. Unless you give in to the fear. God is God. Even in the midst of the circumstances. Amen. Even in the midst of the circumstances. Look with me in the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah chapter 40. In the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Amen. In the book of Isaiah chapter 40, I want you to look with me here in uh, verse number 29. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 29. He giveth them, he giveth, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. He giveth power to the faint, and to he giveth power to, to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. God wants to increase your strength for these next two days. We're going to be praying at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. On these three hours for the next two days, we're going to be praying for the Christians, and we're going to be praying for Jerusalem. On these two hours, just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. I'm not asking you. God is not placed in my heart to, to ask you for a whole lot of time. If you just been faithfully if you faithfully pray 10 minutes for Jeru for America, for the Christians, for, for the Christians and for the peace of Jerusalem, 10 minutes, I'm telling you, you will 
answer the appointment that God has set you for. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to do something in your life. Are you ready? Are you willing to say, God, I'll be that one that you could use at nine in the morning for 10 minutes, at 12 at noon for three for 10 minutes, and at three in the evening for 10 minutes? Will you join me in these hours? Amen. And I know that you're listening to me. And all I ask you to do is just, just, just go to your browser right now on your computer and say, yes, pastor, I'll join you. I'll join you. Amen. If I can just get 12 people to come right now and say, Pastor, yes, I'll join you. Call your friends up and tell them to listen to this program right now and say and, and, and tell them what, that Pastor is asking for 12 people for three times a day. Amen. 12 people for three times a day. That's right. 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. 10 minutes. Amen. 10 minutes. I got that first one. Glory to God. I need, I need, I need 11 more. 11 more. They'll come forth and say, Pastor, that's me. I'll join you. I'll join you. Amen. I'll keep that appointment with God. I'll keep that appointment with God, and I'll be faithful on those three hours. I'll set my alarm for those three hours that I should make sure that I don't miss prayer on those three hours. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is going to do something powerful, and he's going to do something so wonderful in your life because you kept this appointment your sensitivity is going to rise to the next level. Your sensitivity is going to rise to the next level because you kept that appointment. Amen. Because you're acting like the spirit, the, 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 the spirit that was on Daniel when Daniel prayed those three hours a day, you're going to become going to begin to rest upon you. Glory to God. You're going to become sensitive to the spirit of the living God like you've never been before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now let's look at let's look at uh uh in Daniel chapter six. In Daniel chapter six, I want to look at Daniel chapter six and I want to look at verse number uh ten and eleven. It says in Daniel chapter six, verse ten and eleven it says, Now when Daniel knew that the that the right that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his window being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. Notice what he said? He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Three times a day. And prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found him and found Daniel praying. Amen. See, I'm looking at this because, see, Amer uh, uh, the government is trying to put prayer out of everything, trying to put Christ out of everything. And I'm looking at this like these men came against Daniel because they did, they, they tried to put prayer out, trying to stop uh, Daniel from praying to God. I'm looking at this as these men, as these, as the the government coming against uh, uh, us Christians, Amen. Coming against us Christians, trying to bring us in subjection to their laws. Knows how God protected Daniel when Daniel refused to give in to the 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 the, the, the wicked governors that was ruling. Daniel still obeyed God and God protected him. Amen. He still went and kneeled down and prayed faithfully. He wasn't afraid. We cannot be afraid in these last days, but we're in the last days. Amen. We're in the last days and we have to begin to pray like never before. Amen. There's too much persecution in the body of Christ, coming against the body of Christ. And we need to pray. The body of Christ needs to start praying. Amen. Need to start praying. And you're not going to, if the enemy come against you right now, and if you're not praying, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be meat for the field, of, for the beast of the field. Because you're not, you're not doing, you're not doing what God told you to do. You don't want to become meat for the beast of the field. Amen. 
You don't want to become prey for the beast of the field. You want to be obedient to the call of God right now. And you want to pray. You need to call your friends up and start and, and start having prayer meetings. Amen. Start having prayer meetings. Have, you know, you, if you can't go to a church to have a good prayer meeting, invite them to your house and have a prayer meeting one time a week. Amen. Have a prayer meeting. Glory to God. And let God come forth and bring you to that place where you can be valuable to those people that he's sending you to. God wants to use you in these last days because you are valuable. You're created in his image and after his likeness. He's given you the power of all the work of his hands. But the enemy is trying to take it away from you. And he will if you're not praying. So we got to pray, folks. We got to pray. The thief has come for one purpose. To kill, steal, and destroy. To kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Remember, Daniel prayed three times a day. Three times a day. He interceded for his countrymen. He interceded for his nation. He interceded for the people of God. And God is calling us today. He's calling us today to take a stand. He called us today to take a, a stand. What do you mean take a stand? Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel 22. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Ezekiel chapter 22. Are you there? Glory to God. And let's look at verse number 30. He said, And I saw for a man among them that should make up the hedge, and stand in a gap before me for the land that I will not destroy it, but I found none. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But I found none. God is looking for someone this hour in our lifetime. Will you take a stand for righteousness? Or will you, or will you yield to the spirit of deception, the spirit of sin that is I mean, bombarding the hearts of the people of the land. I'm telling you, people, we as the body of Christ, we need to wake up now. We need to start praying like never before. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. We need to begin to intercede for the body of Christ, that the body of Christ would not grow weary, would not give up, would not give in, would not quit, would not throw in the towel and say, this is too much for me. No, it is not too much for you. You've been anointed for such a time as this. Hallelujah. It's time for you to really see, search your heart. <clears throat> it's time for you to really search your heart. And it's time for you to buckle up and put on your dancing shoes. You're not going to dance with the devil no more. You're going to dance with the Lord now. Hallelujah. You're going to dance with the Lord. And you're going to, I mean, you're going to clap your hands. <laughs> you're going to stump your feet. And you're going to shout for joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the kingdom of God is going to rise up within you. And you will have a voice that matters. In these last days. Glory to God. I see you Doug. I see you. Thank you for being there with us today. Amen. But I'm looking for 12 people. Only 12 people. It was 12 disciples. That Jesus trained. To follow his footsteps. 12 disciples. I'm looking for 12 people. That was a pastor. I will stand with you tomorrow at 9 in the morning. I will stand with you tomorrow at 12 at noon. I will stand with you tomorrow at 3 in the evening. Amen. And I will do the same on Friday. Amen. Just two days. And we can bombard the principalities and the powers that is working overtime against the body of Christ and against the holy city of Jerusalem. God's people. Amen. I believe, folks, that we are in a critical time in history. And the body of Christ is not going to go 
and it's not going to lay down and just cry like a baby. The body of Christ is going to have to rise up right now. We are that body. And we will not give up. We will not quit. We will not throw in the, to in the towel. But we're going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God never do anything in the earth until he revealed it to his servant, the prophets. Let me tell you something. When we start praying at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening for two days, you're going to see a shift in the atmosphere. Mm. You're going to, there's going to be a shift in the atmosphere. Because, see, we are not praying to man. We're praying to God on the behalf of man and on behalf of a nation. Not just any nation, but the nation that God has set his seal upon and said, this is mine. This is my land. Amen. And so as we pray, we're going to see a shift in the spiritual realm. Amen. Because we are, we are, we're going to be praying. We're going to, be, we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to put on our whole armor of God. In the morning when we get up, we're going to put on our whole armor of God. And we're going to gird up our lawn with the truth. We're going to put on a breastplate of righteousness. We're going to shine our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're going to uh, take the, the, the shield of faith to quench all the fire darts of the wicked. We're going to take the heaven of salvation. And we're going to take the sword of the spirit. And we're going to go forth with all men in prayer and supplication on behalf of the Christians and on the behalf of Jerusalem. Amen. We're going to pray, folks. And we're going to I'm telling you, the principalities and the powers is going to be pushed back. There's going to be a shift in the spiritual realm. The principalities is going to be pushed back. Amen. Now, when we start this, don't stop until Friday after your last prayer at 3 p.m. Because every hour we pray is going to push the king of darkness back that's why I say if you have to set your alarm clock set your alarm clock I believe that we are about to see a supernatural manifestation of God's presence amen in our land and in Jerusalem it's time for us to become very sensitive to what God is saying we only have a I mean, time is running out. We only have a, a, a few a few more hours left in this land. And we need to work while it's day because when night comes, no man can work. No man can work. Souls are crying and people are dying. Let us be the light that will lead them to the cross. We need to pray and we need to find them. And we need to reach out our hands to them. We need to win the loss at any cost. And the best way right now is to start praying for them that God will put men and women in their pathway that will minister to them, that will minister to their hearts. Amen. Glory to God. Now tonight, we're going to be praying. We're going to be praying for the, uh, we're going to pray for the body of Christ tonight. We're going to pray for Jerusalem tonight. Amen. We're going to pray for those that, are, we're going to pray for the those that are being persecuted tonight. We're going to pray, oh hallelujah. We're going to pray for our families, our loved ones. Oh Jesus, I feel your presence so strong right now. We're going to pray for our country leaders we're going to pray for the ministers the fivefold ministry gifts tonight amen so y'all uh come on let's 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 buckle up and let's let's begin to intercede right now let's 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 get it let's get started right now amen in jesus name i want you to prepare your hearts right now father I ask you in the name of Jesus, on the behalf of everyone under the sound of my voice, I ask you, Father, that you would touch 
every heart right now. And Father, let the spirit of prayer rest upon them. That it'll not just be me praying, Lord, but it'll be them praying also during this time. Father, I thank you and I praise you for it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. See, God is going to lift the blinders off of someone's eyes right now through this while we're praying. The enemy thought he had you, but God is going to deliver you. This is your day. This is your day for your full deliverance. Where the enemy thought he had defeated you, God is about to give you the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Glory to his name. Amen. That spirit of the python that's trying to choke the life out of you. That spirit of the distractor trying to choke, trying, trying to trying to destroy you. Let me tell you something. Today, that spirit that is trying to choke the life out of you is gonna is gonna lose his grip today. Hallelujah. Oh my God, the Holy Ghost is in this place. Hallelujah. Let's begin. Let's let's just have a moment of silence. And let's and and while we're in silent, let's just let our heart come in tune with the living God, the Spirit of God. And then we're gonna go into intercessory prayer. A moment of silence. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, oh, glory to God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray, Father, for the Christians, Lord God. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, because I know, God, that you have created us in your image and after your likeness. You have given us the power over all the powers of the enemy, and God, you said that nothing shall by any means hurt us. So, therefore, Father, we look to you with confidence. We look to you with boldness, Father, and God, we make up the hedge today. We, we make up the hedge today. Oh, God, you said you saw for a man, Father, that would make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Well, Father, we're making up the hedge today, and we'll stand in the gap today for the land, for the land, God, that you will not destroy the land. God, we're asking you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, that you will look upon the hearts of us, your intercessors, Lord God, that you're raising up right now in these last days, that you'll look upon our hearts, God, and that you will see that our hearts, uh, that our, the pureness of our heart toward the land, God. God, we pray, Father, that you would turn your wrath away from our land, God. And God, we ask you, Father, to let peace re-enter into our land. God, let the Spirit of God begin to rest upon our land once again. Oh, God, we, God, even though Jesus never sinned, but yet he was in the earth and he took a sin upon the earth. He took a sin of all the world upon his shoulders, Lord God. And God, we may not be the one committing all these acts of sin in the land, God. But God, we take the, we just like Jesus, he bore the sin of the world upon his shoulders. God, we bore the sin of the nation upon our shoulders. We bear the sin of the nation upon our shoulders, Lord God. And we ask your Father in the name of Jesus. That you will not, oh God, destroy our land, God. But God, that you will spare our land, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. You And Abraham came to you, Lord, and said, if, there, if he find 50 righteous in the land, will you not uh, spare the land for the 50 sake? And God, you said, yes, God. And I believe, Father, there's more than 50 in the land today. God, I believe there's 50. Listen to me right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. And I'm asking your Father, God, that you would touch, that you would minister to the hearts of the people right now, that you release, Father, a fresh anointing upon them right now. Father, I bind every demonic force that is coming against the heart of the, your children, Lord God. I come against that, that demonic force that is trying to steal the mind of your children, Father. Those that you have called out of darkness that translated them into the kingdom of light. Father, I come against that spirit of deception that is working against the body of Christ right now in the name of Jesus, trying to to draw your people away from their steadfastness, 
trying to get them to compromise who they are, trying to get them to turn away from the calling of God that you place upon their life. Father, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will cause them to think of those things which are good, things that are pure, things that are just, things that are honest, things that are of a good report, Father. If they begin to think along these lines, Father, they will not be able to hear what the devil is saying to them because, God, they only hear what your word is speaking to their hearts. So, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that, God, that you will call us to, that you will cause us to, to hear, Father, by the power of your spirit, Lord God. I, God, I know that we're not, we're not, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Because, God, you have called us out of this world. And we are in a world that is so far advanced than this world, God, because we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion. Oh, God, you have given us the power of all the powers of the enemy. So we don't have to be afraid as we enter into spiritual warfare, as we enter into intercessory spiritual warfare, Father. We come, Father, with the blood of Jesus applied from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. And we come, Father, with the whole armor of God on. God, we come realizing, Father, that we are fighting not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And God, we are not coming with a spirit of fear, but we come with a a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. We are not moved by what the world is saying, God. But God, you have said for us to, to stand strong and have done all to stand, stand. It, oh, God, glory to God. Having done all to stand, you have called us to stand. Have not lost girl about with the truth. God, we are not standing for untruth. We're standing for truth. We're standing for righteousness. We're standing, Father, for 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 the for the for the kingdom's sake, Lord God. And we're asking you, dear Lord, that you would touch every man and every woman right now that have agreed, Father, to pray with me for these three hours, for only three hours on the next two days, God. On uh, tomorrow morning at nine a.m., tomorrow noon at and at, at a twelve noon. And then at 3 p.m., Father, I pray, Father, that those that will keep this appointment with you, Father, that you will uh, touch them, that you will breathe upon them, Father. And God, as they begin to experience your presence just by doing it for these two days, for these on these three hours, just for 10 minutes a day, God, God, it's going it's go, it's to spark a fire in their hearts. And they're going to say, why do I have to stop in just two days? God, they're going to want to continue to do it, and more and more every day. God, they're going to want to continue to do it. And God, I know what you're going to do for those that make up their mind to say, Lord, I don't want you to do it for two days. I want to do it for a whole month, or I want to do it for, for 90 days. God, I know, God, that you're going to do something powerful, something mighty in their lives, God, because, God, I know what you have done for me in the past. And I know, God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, Father, as we prepare to unite ourselves to pray for the Christians, God, we pray for the blindness to be lifted from their eyes. Father, we pray that the spirit of fear will, will be moved from the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, that there will be no fear, God, because of the what the laws that the government is passing. Just like Daniel, he stood strong, even though they had passed a law that would condemn him to death, he was thrown in the lion's den. But God, you, you protected him because he stayed true to his calling. He stayed true to the calling. He didn't compromise his, his calling. And God, you protected him. You caused the lion, even though he was thrown in the lion's den, you caused the lion's mouth to be shut that they will not hurt the man of God and God I believe you're going to do the same things today Lord God to those that will, will stand and be strong in you those that will be bold those that will not be afraid those that will not uh, turn coward and run because of what the government is trying to bring upon us God Father I'm asking you in the name of Jesus for a spirit of fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm asking for a spirit of fire to begin resting upon these men, begin to rest upon these women right now in Jesus' name. God, and I'm asking for a spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus. I'm asking for a spirit of boldness to begin to rest upon them. Oh, God, touch their lives like they've never been touched before. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, for righteous cry ministries, Lord God, that you would Bless these people, God, that you would use these people in these last days to help to get this gospel to the nations around the world. And, Father, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that all that you do, God, all that we do for the kingdom of God, it'll be for the glory of God. Not for man's glory, but for the glory of Almighty God. 
And Father, I thank you, Father. I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray, Father, for Jerusalem. I pray, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray, Father, that, Lord God, the leaders that you have set up in Jerusalem right now for this hour, for this end time hour, Father, God, that you will give them a holy boldness, Lord God, that you will give them a holy boldness to stand up against terrorism. I bind and rebuke every red, every red, uh, uh, oh God, every, every eagle, every red eagle, Father, that will bring torment in the name of Jesus against the children of Israel, according to Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 22. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I will not be afraid, Father. I'd say that the children of Israel will not be afraid of terrorism. They will not be afraid of the arrow that fly by day, nor the arrow that fly by of the of the of the. Of the Ever to fly by night, but God, they shall rise up and they shall be strong in you, Lord God, with confidence, trusting in you, Lord God. They will not allow Iran or Iraq to uh, 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 dominate them with fear, but God, they will rise up and begin to uh, promote righteousness. They will begin to they begin to stand up and begin to speak the word of God. And they'll stand for righteousness, God, God. And God, you will give them the strategies like you did for Jehoshaphat. Oh, God, when the enemies came out against him in, 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 uh, in Chronicles chapter 20, God, you gave him the strategies, God, because... He put his trust in you. He put his confidence in you. And he began to pray. And he began to seek your faith. And God, you showed him the way out. Father, I pray that you do the same for Jerusalem today. I pray you do the same for your people today, Lord God. That you will show them their way out, God. That you will not allow them to be annihilated. You will not allow the enemy to torment them. You will not allow the enemy to put fear upon your people's heart. But God, they will be strong in, your, in you and in the power of your might. I thank you, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem in the name of Jesus. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, God, God, we're going to pray for the nations now. We're going to pray for the nations now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I make supplication, prayer, intercession, and give thanks for all the people of, 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 of our nation, Lord God, right now in Jesus' name. God, because I see that the that the power of darkness is moving strongly upon the face of the earth, Father. You showed it to me, Lord God, before it even happened. You showed it to me as it was coming in upon the land as a big tidal wave. And I said, oh, God, what a great move of your spirit. And God, you said, you said, no, that's not a move of my spirit. That is the move, that's a, a move of darkness. And it's coming upon the face of the earth. And you said to warn my people for the end of all things is at hand. And as I, and, and, and as I began to proclaim what you have spoken to my heart, God, as I began to declare what you have given to me, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the people will take warning, that they will not allow the enemy to come upon them suddenly, Father, and overtake them, but God, that they will take warning, that they, they will run, that they will run and not be weary, that they will walk and not faint, but oh God, I just thank you for it in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that your word will not return for it. Let the leaders, oh God, let the leaders be, let the, let the leaders be joint be joined together in our country, Lord God, and let them bow their knee to you as Lord and Savior, and let them stop speaking that this country is not a, 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 a holy country. This country is not a, a righteous country. They, Father, I bind up that word that's been spoken over our country. I bind up that word right now that's been spoken over our nation in Jesus' name. We are a Christian country. We are a people of God. This country is established upon the principles of God. And the righteousness of God's word lives in this nation and in this land. And we are not let go of it in Jesus' name. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for the peace of Jerusalem. That they are not let go of what you've given them also. In Jesus' name. Father, let our leaders fall down before, before, before thee, O Lord. And let them, and, and, and let the nations... Uh, serve, let the nation serve you, Father. Let the nation serve him that's seated upon the throne, that's high and lifted up. God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving because we know, Father, that there's safety and peace in there where you are, in that place where you are. So we come, Father, looking for you not to allow fear to torment us. Father, let the, our leader's heart be turned. Let our leader's heart be turned, Father. And let the leaders of Jerusalem be turned toward you like never before. In Jesus' name. That they will not allow themselves to be tormented any longer. But God, that they will rise up and be strong in you. 
And God, you will be with them. Your word will rise so within their heart. And God, you will give them dreams. You will give them visions. And you will open up their eyes of understanding that they will know what is the hope of your calling, of the purpose of their of them being in position at such a time as this. They will know what is the hope of your calling and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward Jerusalem who believe in the workings of your mighty power. Father, I believe the same for America in Jesus' name. And so, Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray, Father, for the, the those that are being persecuted. Father, you you said pray for those that persecute us. So, Father, I pray for the I pray for those that are persecuting the Christians right now. In the name of Jesus, I lift them up before you, Father, and I ask you, Father, that you will visit them in their sleep, visit them in their dreams, visit them in the wee hours of the night, visit them, Father, even at the moment that they are uh, committed their act of evil toward your people in Jesus' name. Let them see, Father, even as you did for Saul on the road of Tarsus, on the road of Damascus, God. You visited Saul on the road of Damascus, and you said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Now, Father, I ask you to visit these persecutors, those that are persecuting the church, those that are persecuting the body of Christ, Father, no matter what part of the world that they're in. I'm asking, Father, for the that you would minister to those people that have persecuted your people, Lord God, those that have put their trust in you, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to deal with their hearts powerfully, Lord God. Father, there is no terrorist, Father, that is so powerful that he cannot hear what you speak to his heart. God, you can get through to that terrorist. You can get through to that murderer. You can get through to that to that to that thief, to that thief in the name of Jesus. And God, you can turn that person's heart around. And Father, I'm asking you to in the name of Jesus. You said that you said, ask me of the heathen. For I have given you the heathens for thine inheritance. Father, I'm asking you for the heathens right now, Father, of the land. In the name of Jesus, God, let them come to a heart of repentance and let them give their heart to you. In Jesus' name, I praise you for it. Now, Father, I pray, Father, for the body of Christ. I pray, Father, for the fivefold ministries. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for the fivefold ministries. I ask you, dear Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father, as an apostle, of the of the of the ministry, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you forgive us ministers, Lord God, for not holding up the blood-stained banner, for not yielding to the fullness of the calling that you placed upon our lives. That you, Lord God, will cause your word to rise up within our hearts, that we will not compromise our calling, that we will not grow weary in well doing, because we know that in due season we shall reap. I thank you, Father, for the for deliverance, Lord God. That you deliver your people, those that put their trust in you, those that who have called upon you in a time of trouble, you will not leave them, nor will you forsake them, yeah. but you have set your face to, to shine upon them, <clears throat> and with long life, you shall give them peace, and with long life, Father, you shall show forth your glory in the, in the land. Father, I speak blessing over your people in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Father, that you will give us leaders. A word of, of wisdom in, in this last hour, Father, that we are able to speak into the lives of your people, Father, that they will see, Lord God, that the time we're in is not a time to play, it's not a time to quit, it's not a time to, to, to get lazy, but it's a time to seek your face like never before. As the deer panted after the panted for the water, let our souls so long after you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, oh God, you you have given us the uh, you have given us the, the the feet as a as as the, the deer hoof. You have given us the the, the the feet as hind feet, God. We can we can walk upon the high up in the high places, and we can look down into the valleys of the shadow of death. We can see what the enemy is doing, Lord God. You have given us you have given us uh, the supernatural insight, God. God, we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Yea, though the enemy try to blind your people, Lord God, yet, Father, you will give your ministers, you will give your ministers supernatural insight, and you have set them forth as a, fla as a blaze of fire, God. You have set your ministers forth as a blaze of fire. They will not, not be fearful. They will not grow weary. They will not 
get uh, get tired and and, and want to back up and and, and 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 seek rest in in the dry places. But God, they will continue to press in. They'll continue to press forward. They'll continue to move. Father, because God, you are moving with them. You are causing, you are confirming your word in their life with signs, Father. As you said in Mark chapter 16 and verse 20, the Lord went with them, confirming his word with signs, Father. And God, I think, I believe, Father, this last days, God, you're going to confirm your word more and more and more as we speak your word and as we believe your word and as we declare it, God, you're going to confirm your word more and more and more. Because God, you said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. So, Father, I believe your word, that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that what pleases you, and your name will be glorified, because we are not doing it our way, God, but we are doing it your way. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for our families in the name of Jesus. I pray for our loved ones. I pray for our children. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, God, that you would touch our families. Oh, God, our spouses, Lord God. Father, that your hand will rest upon our spouse right now, Father. Because, see, if the enemy can take the spouse, he can take the whole household. Father, I pray for the spouse, Lord God, of every home, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every spouse of every home in Jesus' name, whether the husband and the wife. Father, I lift them up before you, Lord God. And I pray, Father, that you would be, oh God, that you would touch their hearts. God, if they've committed sin, Father, that you forgive them of their sin. If they have opened a door for the devourer to come into their home, to destroy them, to devour them, Father, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to forgive them. God, you said that whoever sinned that we are allowed, you said that you allowed in heaven. Whoever said we remit in earth, you said you remitted in earth. So, Father, I remit their sins, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I remit those spouses' sin. And I'm asking you, Father, to blot it out. Let it not be mentioned, oh God, let it, let the enemy not have an argument in the spiritual realm over their lives. In Jesus' name, oh God, but I'm asking you to blot out their sins. Blot out their transgression. Remember them no more, Lord God. And God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you will visit their hearts with a spirit of forgiveness. That you will visit their heart with a spirit of compassion that you will visit their heart with a spirit of love oh god that you will that you will begin to woo them that you begin to love on them that you begin to nurture them right back into the sheepfold oh god i thank you for it right now in the name of jesus lord god i thank you lord god that the world is not given Father, to the enemy, because you said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and all they that dwell therein. Father, the earth don't belong to the enemy. The enemy don't have no power over this earth. Only those that have their back turned against you. <coughs> and so, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you will give us the heathens as our inheritance, that we can turn their hearts back to you. God, I'm asking you, Father, that you will turn their hearts back to you, that we will be a people. Not forsaken, but a people that have put their confidence and our trust in the Lord our God, the God that created us. Oh, God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. God, as I pray for our families and as I pray for our, the leaders of the families, the spouses, Lord God, I pray, Father, that you will give them a spirit of boldness, a spirit of boldness to stand up against the sin that their children would not bring sin into their house. And God, if the, if the spouses are in sin, I pray, Father, they repent of that sin right now in Jesus' name. That they will not allow sin in their house. That the door to sin will be shut. And that the enemy cannot devour the land in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Father, that your word will not return for it, but it will accomplish that what pleases you. Oh, God, and I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, for our stepchildren. I pray, Father, for those that, are, that have stepchildren. I pray, Father, for the stepchildren right now in Jesus' name. Father, and I pray, Father, for their, for their, uh, 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 for their guardians in Jesus' name. That God, that you would minister to their hearts. That you would, God, that you would set them free. That you would cause their eyes to be open, Lord God, to the truth of the gospel. Father, those that have, that have said that they are Jews and are not. But God, but those that, that those that have turned their back on you because they're looking for a way to live 
a lifestyle, Father, that is not pleasing to you, Father. I ask you, Father, even those hearts, God, that you forgive them of their sin. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Father, to turn their heart. Let their hearts be turned, God. Let their hearts be turned. That they will, in turn, Father, that they will uh, begin to re- uh, that they begin to refocus their offspring, that they begin to refocus their children in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. Let them not experience death, Father, until they have begun to turn the hearts of their children back to the light. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And, Father, I give you praise and I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. And, Father, I pray. I pray, dear Lord God, that, that you would begin to move, Father, in the name of Jesus, upon our, on our, on our uncles and our aunts and our, and our nephews and our nieces and our God, upon our, upon our brothers and our sisters and upon their families, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, their children, their children, children, in the name of Jesus, down to the fourth generation, God. I'm asking you, Father, that you will deal, that you will begin to minister to my, our families. Down to the fourth generation, Lord God, right now, in Jesus' name. Let not, let not these generations be lost. But God, let the light of the gospel begin to go forth now, even in their generation right now, Father. Bring someone in their path. Bring revival. Let revival break out in their path. Oh, God, I'm asking for revival in the... Oh, glory to God. Revival. God, let revival break out in the land. I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Oh, my God. I feel it right now. I feel the spirit of revival is about to come to the land in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for it. I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And I release the spirit of revival right now, Father, because you just revealed it to my heart. I release the spirit of revival right now here in North California in Jesus' name. I release that spirit of revival right now in Sacramento, California, in North Highland, California, in, in, in Citrus Heights, California, in Antelope, California. God, I release the spirit of revival in the name of Jesus. In Redding, California, in Roseville, California, in Marysville, California, in Woodland, California, in, in, in Stockton, California. God, I release the spirit of revival in, 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 in Oakland, California, in San Francisco, California. In Haywood, California. Oh, God, I release the spirit of revival in the state of California. <coughs> in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Revival. I release it now, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you for all that you're doing. Now, Father, I pray for a new life in Christ Jesus Church. And for all of those that are supporting this church financially, I pray for those men and those women, Lord God, that are supporting this church. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus for something special in their lives. I ask you, Father, God, for those that are tithing into this ministry, Lord God, that God, that you will touch them supernaturally, Lord God, right now. Father, and for those that the enemy has come against their minds and their hearts to cause them to come against to, 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 to walk away, Father. God, I ask you to forgive them of their sin in Jesus' name. I won't hold no sin against them, Father. I won't hold their wrongdoing against them, Father. I ask you, Father, to forgive them of their sin and to, Father, that you will minister to their hearts and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. And, God, I ask you to touch them right now in Jesus' name. Father, I love every man and every woman that you have given new life in Christ Jesus Church. And God, everyone that you have made to be a part of this church, everyone that you have support in this church, Father, I ask you to do something very special in their life right now, Father. And in their finances, Lord God, that they will not miss the times or the monies that they have given into this ministry, Lord God. But they will begin to experience, uh, Lord God, that they begin to experience the spirit of abundance. Father, I believe, Father, that the time that the Spirit of God began to move upon the finances, Lord God, with a wave of glory, God, open, I mean, open, open finances. I mean, your, I, I see an opening over your finances, and God about to begin to pour into the finances of those that are supporting this church. Amen. Because you see 
the calling, you see the presence of God, you experience the anointing of God, and God is about to touch all of your hearts that are supporting this ministry. And God is about to do something very special, not only in your finances, but God's about to do something special in your children's lives. See, a lot of your children are not are not walking the way you want to see them walking. And God is about to touch their lives because you are a part of this ministry. God is about to become a part of your ministry to your family. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you have been a part of this ministry, uh, helping us to touch the people of the land, God is going to touch your family because you have been a touch, because you are touching this ministry. Your sons and your daughters, your fathers and your mothers, your sisters and your brothers. Amen. Your, your son, I mean telling you that God is going to begin touching your family because you are touching this family with your support and helping us. God is going to touch your family. Amen. In your time of need. Glory to God. Father, I just thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. I release that word, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Now, Father, I just thank you one more time, Father. I thank you one more time for all those that are listening. Father, I'm asking for 12 people for the next three days to join me in intercessory prayer. 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening for the next two days in prayer. 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening for 10 minutes every third hour. If you would join me on these 10 minutes every third hour for the next two days, God is going to do something in your spiritual heart like you never experienced before. Please set aside that time with me. I need 12 people for the next two days to pray with me at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. We're going to be praying for the Christians, and we're going to be praying for Jerusalem. We're going to be praying for the Christians. We're going to be praying for Jerusalem. And after you pray the 10 minutes for the Christian, pray the 10 minutes for Jerusalem, then you can pray for whatever else you want to pray for then. You can pray for the persecutors or whatever you want to pray for. But 10 minutes we're going to dedicate for the next two days, three times a day, 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening for the Christians and for Jerusalem. And all that agree with that said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Now we're going to take up our offering. Amen. We're going to take up our offering right now. Glory to God. The Bible said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Amen. Shall men give into your bosom. And so we're going to give today to God, and we're going to bless God today. Amen. I want you to prepare your offering right now. And as we prepare ours, go ahead and prepare your offering right now. And all the amount don't matter. The, all that matters is that you obey God. The amount doesn't matter. All that matters is that you obey God. Amen. Because I want to thing I'm going to do is bless you and receive your offering. Amen. Amen. I see that. I see that you all are going to the uh, PayPal right now. You go to my website right now. You're already starting to release your offerings right now and let me just give you a little instructions to those that are to those that uh that are that are that are looking for a way to give a, on which way to give i want you to go to my website uh, larrybergenministries.com and you can sow your seed there amen or you can go to my website you can go to my uh you can go to my website Larry ministries you can so you'll see there, or you can mail it in to us at uh, P.O. Box. Uh, what is the envelope at, honey? It's here. Uh, P.O. Box. 
Okay. That's P.O. Box. Uh, I got it right here. Glory to God. 23. Uh, P.O. Oh, God. Where's the envelope at, honey? That's that's P.O. Box uh forty one seventy nine thirteen. That's P.O. Box forty one seventy nine thirteen, Sacramento, California, nine five eight four one. Amen. We just go to my web go to my go, you can send it in through the mail at P.O. Box forty one seventy nine thirteen to New Life in Christ Jesus Church. Amen. God bless you as you consider to sow that seed. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for all those that are sowing that seed right now. I pray, Father, that you minister to their hearts. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch right now. Oh, God, that you would breathe right now supernaturally upon every heart and every soul that is given right now into this ministry. Oh, Father, I ask you to breathe upon them right now like never before. In Jesus' name, let the full winds of God breathe upon them with a refreshment that only comes from heaven. Not only upon them, but upon their finances. In Jesus' name. And Father, you said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And Father, you said they that bless me, you will bless them. Now, Father, this is... This is the end time. And we believe you for an end time financial harvest. An end time financial breakthrough. That the gospel will not be hindered, will not be blocked. Father, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, as we release our tithes and as we release our offerings, we believe that we receive a manifold return upon our giving. We give willingly and cheerfully. Not grudgingly or of necessity, but we give with a cheerful heart. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that our gift shall be received and blessed by you. Those of you who got your offering ready, go ahead and receive the offering. <clears throat> thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. While you getting your while you while you getting your offering together, I want you to know that every seed that you sow will be used to further the kingdom of God. It'll not be used for for personal. It'll only be used for the kingdom of God. We are a nonprofit organization. You can get a tax write off on your giving amen you be able to uh get your tax write off at the end of, at the end of the year for your giving and we are uh, we appreciate your your obedient heart to the spirit of god as he prompt you and as he ministers to your heart to sow a seed today god bless you amen now let's pray for your tithe you know let's pray over your offering father we bless this god we bless this gift. We bless this tithe. We bless this offering. And God, we ask you to multiply it back into our life, Father. I thank you, Father, for it right now. And I consider it done in Jesus' name. Now, Father, let them see the return. Let them see, Father, that because they are given into this ministry, that this is rich, fertile ground. And let them see, Father, the rapid return on that giving. I thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this is Pastor Larry. God bless you. You may be listening to me today and you say, uh, Pastor, I've never given my heart to the Lord. I never give my heart to the Lord. And today I want to uh, give my I, I want to just open up my heart today because I know that someone is praying for me. And I want to read. I want to give my heart to the Lord. If that's you, you want to give your heart to the Lord. Thank you for putting that address up there, that website address up there. I appreciate that. 
But thank you all for, uh, now, you said, you said, well, Pastor, I'm the one that's hurting. I need prayer. Will you please pray for me? Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. If you listen to me right now, you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. And right now, you're ready to, to get your heart right with God. You're ready to say, God, I've given everything else a chance. I'll get, I tried everything else. I might as well give you a try. If that's you right now, then say this prayer with me right now. Say, Jesus, come on. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. Today is the day of salvation. This is your hour. This is your time right now. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Today, as I confess my sin, I know that you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that by me acknowledging you and what you did on the cross at Calvary, had made me free from the penalty of sin. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was powerful. Now, if you said that simple prayer, believe me that God is working on your behalf right now to set you free from the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of fear, and the spirit of unbelief. We love you. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us today. Remember, remember, uh, we're going to try to put together that while we're on air, we're going to be able to try to receive prayer requests. While we're on air, we're going to have someone praying for you. You can call in and give your prayer request. While we're on air, we're going to see if we can get a line set up for that. Amen. Uh, very, very soon. Amen. So uh, just keep your ear open. We're going to get this uh, set up where you'll be able to call in your prayer requests during this hour of power. God bless you. We'll see you again on Intercessory Prayer Warrior. Wednesday nights. God bless. Bye-bye.